Welcome to another tutorial lesson. This time around, we're going to be answering a very common question that we get, which is, can enterprise value be negative? And can equity value be negative? So the short answer to this question is yes, but. So it's not an absolute unqualified yes. We need to qualify it a little bit, and we need to explain exactly what we mean and in which conditions either or both of these could potentially be negative. As a starting point, keep in mind that enterprise value represents the value of a company's core business assets to all the investors in the company. Equity value, by contrast, represents the value of all the company's assets, but only to the common shareholders, the equity investors in the company. And then there's also equity or shareholders equity, which is a balance sheet figure on a company's balance sheet. It has no market value, and it's linked mostly to net income and dividends, although items like share issuances, repurchases, and stock-based compensation, among others, can also affect it. Then beyond equity value and enterprise value, there is the concept of current versus implied or intrinsic. When you see the word current, it refers to the company's equity value or enterprise value based on its publicly traded share price. And it represents the market's views of the company's value. So if you look up a company on Yahoo Finance or Google Finance, and it has a market cap of a billion dollars, an equity value of a billion dollars, that's what the market as a whole thinks all the company's assets are worth to its equity investors. Current enterprise value can be negative. Implied enterprise value or intrinsic enterprise value can be negative. Current equity value cannot be negative, in theory anyway. Implied equity value can be negative, and then equity or shareholders' equity on a company's balance sheet can definitely be negative. So if you look at all these terms, four out of five of them could potentially be negative. Really, the only one that's an exception is current equity value here, at least for public companies. So that's the short answer to this question. To give you a slightly longer and more in-depth answer and explain the reasoning behind all this, we're going to go through first how enterprise value can be negative. Then we'll look at how implied equity value can be negative. And then we'll look at the qualifications and the fine print for these statements about negative enterprise values and equity values. So how can enterprise value be negative? First off, if you just do a quick Google search online, you can easily get the answer to this question. Because if you just search for negative enterprise value, you will find sites that have lists of companies with negative enterprise value. As you can see, many of them in fact, almost all of them are in the healthcare, biotech, and technology sectors. The CFA blog even has articles on negative enterprise value and what it means to invest in companies with negative enterprise value. So you can pretty easily verify this one with a two second Google search. This concept applies to both current and implied enterprise value. If you can observe a company that has a negative enterprise value out in the real world, then with your own views of the company, you can certainly create assumptions that lead to that negative enterprise value as well. The easiest scenario in which this happens is if a company has a market cap, no debt, and some cash, and the company's cash exceeds its market cap. Now, in case you think this is impossible or can never happen, take a look at one of these companies, Vical or Vical Incorporated. It was in that list on a previous slide. and. As of the other day, the company's market cap was 27.6 million, but it had cash of around 32.8 million and no debt, which means that its enterprise value, its current enterprise value is negative 5 million. And this is according to Capital IQ, so it's a pretty reliable source. It's not as if you read something in a tabloid or a mainstream publication that doesn't know what finance terminology means. Now you might think, Okay, this makes sense mathematically, but what does that actually mean? How can a company's core business assets actually be worth a negative amount? That doesn't really make any sense because shouldn't assets always be worth a positive amount? And the answer is, if those assets generate negative cash flow into the future, then no, they could easily be worth a negative amount, especially if it never turns around and they keep generating negative cash flow. You can value a company that's in a steady state by taking its cash flow and then dividing by the discount rate minus the cash flow growth rate, where the cash flow growth rate must be less than the discount rate. This is the basis for the terminal value formula in a DCF. And there are a couple of requirements to use it. These numbers have to be stable. The discount rate and the growth rate can't be moving around. The growth rate has to be less than the discount rate. You can see from this formula that clearly, if a company's cash flow is negative right now and it stays negative forever, then its implied enterprise value must be negative because the denominator of this formula is always going to be positive. 
And so if the numerator is negative, then the whole formula will be negative. Now, of course, some people look at this and say that you can't really do that. It's not valid if the cash flow is negative. We have to assume that the cash flow is positive. So let's just avoid the controversy here and show you right now how you could have a company with positive cash flow and everything normal in its terminal period and still get to a negative implied enterprise value. So let's pull up the Excel file. Here we have a company that has explosive growth in the first few years, 97%, 115% growth. And then by year 10, it slows down to around 20% growth. And eventually by year 15, it's growing around three, four, or 2% per year. Now this company's margins are also quite low in the beginning. They have to spend a lot of money to grow. So their margins fall. Their operating margins are negative initially. So the company is losing money. And by the end, they turn positive and stabilize at around positive 6% operating margins. We're also being generous and giving them the benefit of the doubt and saying that they accrue net operating losses from having negative operating income and negative pre-tax income in the beginning. And so we give them the benefit of those net operating losses later on. When the company's operating income turns positive, we deduct these net operating losses and use them to offset the company's taxes so that the company effectively only starts paying taxes in the last few years of this model. The rest of the assumptions for depreciation, amortization, the change in working capital, capital expenditures are all pretty standard and straightforward. And if you go down and look at the unlevered free cash flow for this company, it's very negative initially for the first eight years or so. And then in year nine, it finally turns positive and it fluctuates a little bit, but it remains positive. And we assume that as you go into the terminal period past year 15, it keeps growing at a fairly low rate of around two or 3%. So here's the interesting part. With these assumptions and a discount rate of around 10.5%, a terminal growth rate of 2.5%, the company's implied enterprise value according to this DCF is negative. Why? The terminal value is positive because the company's cash flow is positive once you go into these last few years and into year 15 and beyond. And if you use the formula, you get a positive value. You discount it to present value and you also get a positive for this. But the problem is that the sum of the present value of the free cash flows here in the first eight or nine years or so is very, very negative. And money today is worth more than money tomorrow. These negative cash flows, therefore, make much more of an impact in these earlier years than the positive cash flows later on do. So we get to a negative implied enterprise value here when we add the present value of terminal value to the sum of the present value of free cash flows. You can see that even if a company's cash flow eventually turns positive and stays that way, its implied enterprise value could still be negative. The reason this happens is what I just showed you. The present value of what you put in to keep the company running exceeds the present value of the cash flows you earn back. So in the early period, when the company doesn't have much, its cash flow is negative, and so you, the investor, need to keep putting in money to fund the company. Now, eventually, the cash flow turns positive, but you have to look at what you're really getting out and just how much you'll get back and what it's worth when it's much further into the future. And if the cash flow stays negative forever, the way to think about it is that the company is worthless today and you have to contribute cash to keep it running, which is why it can be worth a negative amount. Not only is it worthless to you right now, but if you want to acquire this company, you will actually have to put in money to keep it running and you will never get anything back out of it. Now, this may seem far-fetched, but keep in mind that in real life, companies like Uber and Snap go through this situation and are going through it as I record this video. In fact, a lot of this lesson was inspired by our previous valuation of Snap, which wasn't really that much different. We just assumed more of a turnaround for the company, but in the beginning, they had very, very negative operating income. We gave them the benefit of net operating losses, and by the end, they turned themselves around. So the only difference really in our valuation of Snap and what I just showed you on screen is that there is much more of a turnaround scenario for Snap than there was in our scenario here. Let's go to part two now and talk about how equity value might be negative. As mentioned before, equity can mean many different things. The names get somewhat confusing. If it's on the balance sheet, any type of equity shown on the company's balance sheet can easily be negative. If net income is negative and continues to be negative over a long time period, or if the company is issuing too much in dividends or it does a dividend recap or something like that, now, current equity value in theory cannot be negative because this is equal to share price times shares outstanding for public companies. A company's share price cannot be negative and a company's shares outstanding cannot be negative. These both must be positive numbers. So in theory, 
current equity value for public companies should be positive. However, implied equity value could easily be negative. Really, it means the same thing. You're going to put in a lot of cash to keep the company running, and you're not necessarily going to get much of anything back over the course of the holding period. Let's go to part three now and talk about the fine print and the qualifications for these concepts. First off, note that possible does not mean plausible. So yes, it is possible for current or implied enterprise value or implied equity value to be negative, but they rarely stay negative for very long. With most companies, if the market has a very negative view of the company, eventually its view of the company will either turn around and the company will start succeeding, or if it doesn't turn around and the company keeps bleeding cash flow and cannot raise additional money, the company will go bankrupt and die. If you think about the intuition here, it doesn't really make any sense that a company could last for a long time if its core business is actually worthless. And in fact, it doesn't really happen. Either it turns around or it doesn't turn around and the company dies. So these types of companies with negative enterprise values and negative implied equity values, for example, tend not to be around for very long. Often, if you get this result in evaluation where one or both is negative, you will just set the company's implied share price to zero in that case. Because if you get this result, it means you should probably be looking at other valuation methodologies to begin with, such as a liquidation valuation or something more appropriate for distressed companies. So those are a few things to keep in mind about this concept. Let's do a recap and summary. Shareholders equity or equity in the balance sheet could easily be negative. When it happens, it's almost always a negative sign because the company has either been recording negative net income or has been paying out too much in dividends or has just paid out a huge dividend recap to a private equity firm, for example. Equity value, at least if you measure current equity value, in other words, share price times shares outstanding, cannot be negative because neither share price nor shares outstanding can be negative. But implied equity value could be negative depending on the assumptions because it all comes down to your view of the company, how much cash flow you think they're going to generate in the future, and what you think their discount rate is. With enterprise value, both current and implied enterprise value could be negative. But keep in mind with all these, these cases are pretty rare. And when a company has negative metrics for one or more of these, it tends not to last very long. It tends to either recover very quickly or it tends to die quite quickly as well. The meaning of this when one or both of these is negative is that you expect or the market expects the company to generate negative cash flow into the future and you'll have to contribute to the company to keep it running. Your contributions into the company in those earlier years are worth more than what you earn from the company eventually if it turns itself around. In most cases, when you get negative results for these in evaluation, you shouldn't even be using traditional methodologies. And some people will try to tell you that if you find a company with a negative enterprise value, it's a bargain because it means, for example, that you could buy its shares for less than its cash per share. Maybe its share price is $5, but its cash per share is $6. So it seems like a great arbitrage opportunity. But be careful with this reasoning because the company doesn't have to distribute that cash to you. Now, if you acquire the entire company, then sure, you could maybe make this argument. But if you just acquire a few shares of the company, the company is under no obligation to distribute cash, to issue dividends, or to do anything else. So the company could easily just burn through all the cash try to keep raising money, keep burning through that, and you will end up with nothing and possibly even end up costing yourself something if you try to invest in a company like this. That's it for this lesson. Hopefully you should know a little bit more about how equity value and enterprise value might be negative, how to think about it, and also why it's very rare and doesn't happen too often.